Hello, and welcome back to our podcast. I'm the Disturbed Southern Belle. And I'm the Gentleman. On this episode, we're going to be talking about some creepy Russian folklore and some of their creepier haunted areas. Well, I know the Russians <clears throat> have a lot of really good creepy folklore and just oh, scary stories in oh, general. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is somewhere that you're actually not supposed to go. This is somewhere that's actually kind of illegal to go. Um, and it's the Moscow Metro. So this metro through Moscow is one of the most commonly used means of transportation in Moscow. So there are like hundreds and sometimes even thousands of people that use these trains every day. But <clears throat> there are a few different stories that have emerged from the metro. But of course we're only going to discuss the uh, lore that surrounds Metro 2. Now this is somewhere that you're not supposed to go. So Metro 2 was said to be constructed in the 1930s, and this happened while Russia was still under the rule of Joseph Stalin. And it's said that the Metro 2 was constructed under his orders, and it's said to be around 50 to 120 meters long, or 164 to 393 feet, so not huge. Not very long, no. So, no. Now, it's underground, and it has four lines, which was plenty of room to move a large number of people in case of a wartime emergency or another type of emergency that might demand an evacuation. Okay, so this this little section, it's underground, and basically it's set up for some kind of evacuation or emergency type thing. Now, most likely they were probably planning on for some type of war, but still. So, there's also a very interesting rumor that surrounds the metro, and that's said that there's this secret entrance located somewhere in the Kremlin building, and that it has corridors connecting to the facilities um, that run to this area. That wouldn't surprise me. No, it wouldn't Actually, a fairly good idea. It is. It's not a bad idea. I mean, if you want to be smart, yeah, have some secret outed, you know, yeah. place you can go. You never know when you're going to actually need an emergency passage. Right. Exactly. So, there's never been any absolute proof that these tunnels exist, but there are still many that speculate that there is a secret metro, and that <clears throat> while it was once in a reachable area, it's now been closed off supposedly for the safety of the city. Sure. So, yeah, that's why you can't go there anymore. Is that the case? Don't know. So, since this station was built to be used as a fallout shelter of sorts, um, it was outfitted with several bunkers. It has air filtration and sleeping areas for over a thousand people. So well, that's very impressive, exactly. actually. So because of that, it's you know little surprise that there have been many urban legends that have emerged around this, of course. Uh, well, so you know, yeah, it's only natural, really. Secret bunker here, right? If you have a place where you're not supposed to go, it's public knowledge that it was built, right? And it's known that it's meant to be a type of bunker mm -hmm. or just a safe spot. Right. There's going to be stories exactly. circulating. There's going to be legends being created about it. Yeah, and now here's where it kind of starts getting a little weird. So there's also said to be these mysterious creatures that roam the tracks. And they've been claimed uh, that these, wit these creatures, those have witnessed them that say... Uh, they're kind of a human hybrid type of creature, and some say that they were brought into existence by some sort of Soviet experiment gone wrong. Again, wouldn't surprise me, really, exactly. if there were some sort of experiments like that done. Exactly. In fact, there most likely were. I wouldn't doubt but, it. But, eh, right. were there to be the subjects of those experiments still alive? Right. It seems like they'd be executed. Most likely, but don't know. But anyway, others have reported that they've seen rats that are so large that they're capable of dragging away anyone who dares to venture into their territory. So fun. Oh, okay. These yeah. gigantic rats now. So there's another story that there's a train that appears right as the metro is closing. And this train is said to look like it is from the 40s or 50s and that it's driven by a man that's wearing a Soviet uniform. And it's said that if you get on the train, you'll never be seen again. Ghost train. Ghost train. <laughs> now, there's another train that looks very modern, and it's said to follow this circle line. 
<clears throat> now this is said to happen after midnight and this train will follow the line then it will stop but when it stops the doors don't open and it's said that this is because that the only ones that can board the train are the souls of those that lost their lives during the construction of the metro actually that's a pretty cool legend actually i like that one right so there's another story of the black driver so the origins of this story are said to be from the 1980s and it said that a train on the metro caught fire and that the driver instead of saving himself ran into the flames to pull the others from the train <clears throat> now it's said that he was able to actually save several of the passengers but sadly you know, he passed away a short while later from his own injuries from you know going into the fire and you know smoke inhalation and all that yeah so the officials of the metro though ultimately blamed him for being the uh the starter of the fire so it's said that this has led to him walking the metro at night in search of revenge for being wrongfully accused i don't blame him no, if that is true if that's, that's true. fair yeah that's very fair yeah if he died you know trying to save other people then they'd want to accuse him of actually causing it now yeah. i'm not saying he didn't i have no he very clue well could have. but still but yeah. if he was wrongfully accused and this is real yeah I, I i can go along with that exactly now the next one we're going to talk about is called the collector so this legend revolves around a person that is only known as the collector now this person is said to roam the streets of Russia at night and they're on the lookout for anyone that they deem as easy prey. Now as expected this prey is usually children of course because mm. you know why wouldn't it be. And they say if the collector comes upon a child that they will kidnap them and harvest their organs. So Slenderman. I guess. I mean why not? doesn't say what they look like so maybe it is so sometimes the children are never seen from again however there are also reports that victims will find themselves waking up in alleyways parks and sometimes in that infamous bathtub filled with ice uh. so yeah i mean why not right now this sounds like it may be a story that's trying to keep kids at home but, you know, whatever. That wouldn't surprise me. It's <clears throat> fairly common for stories to have that type of moral. Exactly. So, it's not completely certain what the collector is doing with all these specimens that they're collecting. But there are numerous retellings that say that the organs are used for displays in jars. Because, you know, why wouldn't you? So, yeah, Slenderman. That's exactly what Slenderman does. Maybe so. A, uh, has the organs strung up from jars and just hanging right. around his little cabin. So I guess this is what he did, the collector does too, so why not? So this kind of ties into this story of Anatoly Mosh Moshkvin. And he was arrested in 2011 for his supposed connection to grave robberies that were taking place. So when the police searched his home, they found the remains of 26 girls, and they'd all been mummified to make them look like dolls. Well, that's not creepy at all. No, so yeah. And when they questioned him, he claimed to have plans to bring the girls back to life using either black magic or science. Sure. So, I'll take that. Why not, right? But he's Completely collecting... Completely absolve him yeah, of his crimes. He's collecting the whole person though not organs but still mm. bad enough right so the next one is the black volga and this is about a car so this car legend originated in russia but it's been found in uh, various other countries like the ukraine greece and mongolia so while this tale is similar to the collector uh it's a bit more sinister so it began in the 1960s and it seemed to be a tale that was again to keep children off the streets at night so according to the original tale it was this bad omen to see this black volga car okay so if you were unlucky enough to see this car creep by you at night it was said to mean almost certain death mm. because you know yeah right why not reminds me of uh like one crypt that I covered a long time ago now, the black dog mm -hmm. that just runs up the aisle and just slashes you. Right. 
Yeah. If you see it, you're going to die anyway. Exactly. So, of course, the main target is said to be children, and the legend says that uh, they were taken as the car makes it ra- makes its rounds, and it's said that whatever lurks inside the car would either keep you for 24 hours or take your life on the spot. So, I guess it just depends on what kind of day they were having. Yeah. Or if you're annoying or not. I don't know which. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe it's a game. Maybe. And no one's just survived the maybe, game. Maybe that's it. So, as for rumors as to what exactly was inside the car, well, they vary, of course. Of course they do. So, some say that it's a Jewish person because, of course, what else would they be doing with their time but, you know, going around grabbing children because why not? Uh, some other religious figure in general, they don't know who, it's just some religious figure that's going mm-hmm. around doing it. Or... Or it could be Satan himself. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, you just don't know. Sometimes people say there are also these creatures inside the car. Could be a demon, could be a witch, could be a vampire, could be men in black. Mm. So apparently, I mean, they've really done their research on this. Oh, you know, yeah. As you can tell. But anyway. So, it's said that when the devil is supposed to be behind the wheel of the car, that he's taking the children because he wants to use their blood for ritualistic purposes. Because you Why know, would the devil perform the rituals? I, I, I don't know. I, but, yeah, I mean, of course. Why wouldn't he? I don't know. Gotta have a reason. I don't know. And there you go. So, there are also tales that this was uh, someone who was working with the Russian government. And they were going around abducting children and then using their blood to cure certain ailments at the time. Now, how, I, whatever, but wow, why aren't they doing that all the time? it's those rituals. Yeah. It's gotta be. There you go. So, children that have reported that, uh, that when you see the car in the distance, that instead of having side mirrors... The car instead looks like it's got horns, which sounds kind of comical in a way, but, you know, whatever. Some claim that there's, like, this curtain there that separates the front seat and the back seat so that you can't see who's sitting in the rear of the car. I don't guess who cares who's sitting in the rear. I mean, really, who's sitting at the driver's seat, too? I mean, you know, who's in the the car in general? But, yeah, so avoid the black Volga if you see it coming. But I guess it doesn't matter because apparently if you just see it, it's just bad luck. So I don't know what to Uh tell you. Walk around with your eyes closed. (laughs) So the next is the curse of Ivan Vasali. So Ivan Vasali was a freight liner that was built in the 1890s. So, there was really nothing special that was ever said to happen on the boat in the first five years of its service. But, as you can imagine, since it's on this list, that changed in 1903. So, this was the year that Russia was preparing for war with Japan. And this caused the ship's purpose to change drastically, of course. Because now the ship was used to move supplies to aid the war war effort, of course. Mm. (laughs) So... When the boat departed from either uh, Africa or Zanzibar, it said that something else joined the ship's crew. Uh. Now, this actually reminds me of a game that we played, The Man in Medan. Oh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of that because it's creepy. So, it's reported <clears throat> that everyone on the ship reported this feeling of being watched. They couldn't see anything, but everybody felt like something was watching them. You know, that feeling, you get that little, oh, yeah. you know, spooky feeling of Very back. well aware of that feeling. Right. So, some reported that they saw this type of entity on the ship's deck, but they couldn't make out its features or what it was. They just got a glimpse of it. But, soon after this supposed sighting, one of the crew members just screamed in panic. And this act caused the others to begin to act wildly, and eventually they just all started attacking each other. Mm. <clears throat> just no reason, just everybody started going crazy. As so, one does. Well, yeah, I mean, somebody screamed, so, you know, obviously it's time to go. But this violence went on for several hours until one crew member, Alec Govinsky, 
threw himself over the ship's railing to escape all the chaos. Now it said that soon after this happened, everyone else that remained on the ship just fell to the floor unconscious. Well, all right then. Then, a bit later, they awoke, and everything was back to normal. All right then. So you figure that's the end of this. That was just some crazy bender. Somebody, you know, oh, sure. they just took some mass mushrooms. psychosis. Let's just call it mass psychosis, and that's it. There you go. Somebody ate a bad crab. I mean, we don't know. Mm. Something, but anyway. So, of course, the ship makes its way back to port without any further issues. However, again, when it voyaged out, there was another incident. So, again, while out at sea, this entity was, again, seen out on the ship's deck. Somebody got a glimpse of it. And once again, the ship just goes into a frenzy and keeps going on until one of the crew members again throws themselves overboard. Then the same thing happens again. So, from the sound of it, it's just... It's like it's wanting to sacrifice or something. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So, despite this se second fatality on the ship, the ship was sent out again to Hong Kong. And just as before, the crew broke down into this hysterical frenzy before they reached their destination. And this time, though, the captain, Savin Andrus, threw himself overboard. Well, that's a very smart idea. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you would figure, now, this has been three times now that this craziness has happened. So, of course, they, you know, put the ship up, right? Well, they have to at this of point. Course. But no. They sent it out for two more voyages, and each time, the same thing happened. It just... No, you got at a point, you got to start to realize, maybe this ain't a coincidence. Yeah, you would think. Maybe this isn't an isolated incident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you might think that, but no. It took two more voyages, then finally they deemed that it was too unsafe to send back out on the water. Jesus Christ. But this time, though, luckily, uh, people they were man and it, the people who were going to throw themselves overboard somehow know they managed to restrain them below deck, and then after some time, it just went away, uh, anyway, without them throwing themselves overboard. So. What the heck was going on on this ship? Is this Makes me think of the siren song. <clears throat> I mean, something. It's crazy. Mm. So, it was taken out of commission and set abandoned until 1907 when it was eventually set on fire to finally release the evil that was supposedly within it. Good. So, yeah. So, it's gone now, but my God, why did they keep sending this out? <laughs> that confuses me. Some money, I guess? I guess. I don't know. But... They would have had to have experienced some lawsuits there. You would think. Now, it was a long time ago, and Russia, so... Oh, true. But still. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is the Horvinskaya uh, Hospital, or the KZB, which is what I'm going to call it. So, this hospital had plans of being just this massive hospital of its time. So, the construction began in 1981, and it was originally supposed to include, like, 1,500 beds, laboratories, and even helicopter landing pads. So, in 1981, Russia, I mean, that's a pretty big hospital. Yeah, that's fairly big. But, all this just came to a halt in 1985, when the construction was suddenly just called off. And the hospital had started to sink into the ground on one side. And by the time that it was noticed, it was too late to fix the issue. Well, all right. Yeah, you. I don't know. You think they'd do more uh, scoping out to make sure? Yeah, that you would have thought as much to know that the the let ground couldn't support it. But whatever. So, of course, the building was then deemed unsafe and it was closed indefinitely. So, within a few months, of course, the legends and the rumors began to grow as to why, of course, it was really stopped. Why Which they're is not building? Which is fairly it. natural. Of course. So. The story started with the ground that the hospital was being constructed on. So the l ground, uh, people said, was once a cemetery because it's always a cemetery. Well, it's got to be. So why? Yep. I if don't you think know. about it, the entire world is a cemetery. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, there was never any proof of that. But it's likely that the ground was just too saturated to hold the weight of the building is what they eventually said. And that's probably what it was. That makes but, sense. As expected, as the hospital set for many years without use, nature began to take over. Of course it did. 
The basement flooded and, you know, large bushes and vines started to cover the interior and exterior. Because why wouldn't it, right? There's nobody there to stop it. So, this has led, of course, to many urban explorers to head to the site to explore. Because, of course, you know, you got to go out there. This thing is falling in. It's sinking on one side. It may collapse at any time. I got to be there. Yeah. Duh. So, there are many photos and some videos that, of course, can be found online. And there's a lot of graffiti that also covers the walls of the hospital, some of which that is said to be satanic in nature. Mm. But it's always, of course. I mean, people could paint a freaking just star with nothing else, you know, no circles, no nothing, and people would say it's a pentagram. I mean, come on, you know, yeah. at the same time, just depending on the person. So, this has led many to believe that the reason that the construction was abandoned was because of evil entities that are now in the area. Naturally. Of course. There was a Reddit post that speaks about a group known as Nemo Star, who was said to have ties to satanic rituals that took place on the fourth level cellar in the 1990s. According to this post, there's some proof to these accusations, as it said that police looked into the claims and they found fragments of animal bones as well as some human bone fragments in the little area there. Well, that's not strange at all and definitely wouldn't fuel the rumors of it being a burial ground. Exactly. Now, there's also been claims of ghosts roaming the halls and the sounds of disembodied voices that some have reported uh, even being touched by these unknown sources. Well, I mean, it is a hospital, so ghost stories are only natural. Yeah, but they never had any patients in there because they never finished construction. That is a bit weird. So, yeah. Again, only fueling the rumors of it being a graveyard. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a lot of actual real-life horror that's supposed to have taken place in this building's history. Uh, there have been numerous homeless people that have been found inside deceased, which is sad. You that's know, and that could sad, be, yeah. you know, for a hundred thousand reasons, but still. Uh, there are also tales of young women that have been lured inside and had their lives taken, which I can imagine would be as sad as it is, probably a good place because who's going to be out there? You know, it's sick, but, you know, ugh. Uh, another report is that of a young man, Alexi, uh, who was said to have been thrown uh, or possibly threw himself down the elevator shaft from the eighth floor or from the roof, depending on the telling, uh, due to an unrequited love. And now he said to now... Rome, the area. Uh, one floor of the hospital even has a memorial to him as there's an entire wall of graffiti that has poetry and prose whose overall message is we will remember and mourn. Hmm. Which is kind of sad too. Yeah. Now. Strangely well, wholesome. It is. now. Sad. Exactly. Now, whether it's true, who knows. Um, it's also reported that several people have went missing while just roaming the halls period, and at least 300 people have lost their lives both during the construction and while exploring its interior, and it was finally tore down in 2012. Now, people could have lost their life exploring the interior because, I mean, it's a run-down, fallen hospital. God yeah. knows what could have happened. But still, you know, other nefarious things, I'm sure, could have happened as well, but still, it's creepy. It is, very much so. And I don't know why, but anytime anybody sees a run-down building, they gots to get inside it. So, That's you know. a bit weird. But, there it's you go. It's like cave diving. It seems stupid, and yet so many people do it. Exactly. It's like an urge that people get. Uh, yeah, jumping out of planes, all that. I mean, I don't know. But, anyway... All right, the last place we're going to talk about is Austin Kino. So, around 500 years ago, there were tales of this old woman of Austin Kino, and they, it's when she was supposed to have originated, so to speak. Mm. So, it's said that she came to the village ruler and forbade him from tilling the land because it agitated the dead. Okay. And, of course, he said... Absolutely, that makes perfect sense. We won't do that anymore. I'm guessing he didn't. No, of course he didn't. Uh, she was chased out of the village, and the ruler then fell into dis uh, disgrace and was executed. Well, all right then. Mm. So, then, later, she is said to have appeared to Sar Paul when he came to Austin Kino. 
She predicted that he would not survive until spring, and her prediction came true. Hmm. Then, she said to also have appeared to Alexander II, who was passing through the area when uh, he would die at the hands of an infidel. He was later executed. She told him that he would die by the hands of an infidel, I meant to say. And then he was later executed by the member of a leftist group. Yeah, that... I mean, he was probably well known <clears throat> at that time. There you go. So that's not really much of a prediction. Exactly. Uh, she was also reported to have been seen a few days before an assault that took place in October of 1993, where she predicted that the town would soon smell of blood, which was again a correct prediction when this person came in with the gun and just kind of opened fire. Hmm. And lastly, she was spotted before a fire that took place in 2000 at the Austin Kino Television Tower where four people died. So I guess if you see this woman, good things are not listen coming. Listen to her and listen. do whatever you can to prevent that outcome. Exactly. Either listen to her and also get away from wherever she's at because something bad's probably going to happen, one of the two. But anyway, that is some of the creepy ghost stories and ghost tales that I found for Russia. On our next episode, we're going to start talking about some of the most haunted places in the United States. And we're going to go state by state. Um, we're also going to start bringing you some more cryptid episodes, hopefully very soon. Uh, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. And don't forget to stay, stay disturbed. disturbed.